Also, um, I want to say this as well. Uh, Ethiopian girls holla at me, man. Mm. Home team. Mm. As soon as I see, as soon as I see a fatty with a forehead to match. It ain't yeah, that I can't stop. Nope. It's that I won't stop. Go. I made a few plays off a of flip. Now I'm on top. Jeez. I'm Southside Chief, homie. Yeah. What you know about it? Lake Street Legend CEO, not the co-founder. What you wanna know about me? I'm so cursed up. I'm the last man standing, but I went first up. Most hated, they don't say it when I roll uh -uh. up. No, the things that people say it. about me, they don't say close up. Check it. I ain't been to the booth in a minute. Jeez. Niggas hate the fact that I'm winning. Yeah. Who makes him the chief for the South Side? Oh, my nigga, I'm not a lieutenant. Side. When I was in the gym, you wasn't in it. Jeez. Face time, so my windows is tinted. Yeah. If I said that shit, then I meant it. Niggas gave me the rules and I bent it. Fact. Same, same nigga that was trapping while I was suspended. Ooh. You wasn't in them hallways banging, boy, you wasn't in it. Ooh. Really a genuine nigga, homie, don't get offended. From East, Lake, South, Murder. Ooh. I'm just saying that I can't stop. Is that I won't stop. All right, another episode of Minnesota's number one daily show live on Lake Street. Special guest, Ashanafi. Yeah, heck yeah. yeah. So many times when I'm like doing uh, comedy stuff, they'll be like, Asha Nifi? Like, <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> Have you considered like changing your name to like a comedy name that's easier? Uh, when I first started, I thought about it, but the way it worked was if people who know me mm -hmm. watch me and they hear now coming to the stage, Blue Dragon or whatever mm. I decide to do, it's like, well, who is that, right? That doesn't identify with like me, my family, whatever. So I'm sticking with the name. Yeah. And actually, it's probably, especially in comedy, it's probably good for you to have a somewhat unique name anyways, right? In a way, yeah. In a way, no. It's good because it makes you stand out, but mm -hmm. it's bad because every time I write my name down on a list to be introed, every time I'm on stage, every time an audience member is like, how you say your name again? It's like this whole, <laughs> it becomes this whole thing, so... Okay. But I'm used to it, so yeah. I just I just roll with the punches. It some of so many of my jokes are about my name. Ah. Not like making fun of my name, but just like what people call me. You know, if I go to Starbucks, I can't tell them Ashanafi because I'm gonna hold the line up for like thirty minutes, right? So <laughs> there's other things I gotta do to What's the stuff. worst somebody's mangled your name? Oh jeez, there's it, who knows what I'll hear tomorrow, but I've been called Akbar. Oh wow. Ashanophilophagus. <laughs> wow. Just so many. Wow. It's ridiculous. Oh wow. So um, you know, one thing I'll say is I think over the last very specifically over like the last two years, not to say that it hasn't existed before, but we're starting to see an abundance of a comedy scene in Minnesota. Now, what I will say is if you know, you know better and you yeah. know differently. We have had a great comedy scene here for a long time, including some legends, you know, like Mitch Hedberg. Um, who's the other guy? There's another guy out there. There's Nick Swartzen. Nick there's Louis Anderson. Right. There's Chad Daniels. Chad Daniels was the name there's of the Yeah, so I think there's definitely been uh, a little bit of an inc a definite increase in the comedy scene. Yeah. Um, I think increase in uh, exposure. Mm, selective exposure. Mm. I think the exposure is selective. Mm -hmm. Not to like... Nah, not, you, you know, said it. Now you got to stand on it. Right, <laughs> right. You can't say it and pump fake on it. But I think what happens in Minnesota is like um, if you're... If, if your name is, it, it's harder to get exposure if nobody knows how to say your name. It's mm. hard to get exposure if, you know, you're talking about things that Minnesota Minnesotans won't necessarily feel 100% comfortable with. Mm. So like... Minneapolis, police brutality, the riots, like talking about these types of things because they make people feel uncomfortable. It's harder to get that stamp of approval, but it's just kind of the, but the that subject hasn't, matter. That hasn't swayed you away from it, though. Nah, because it's kind of what I experienced, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm from South. You're so, from South Side? Yeah. Okay. So there was, before 2019, I was kind of more similar to other comics where it's like, well, I was doing, I was hanging out with my friends and I was doing this fun thing and I was, you know, all these general fun premises post 2020 because my perspectives changed, so did the jokes. Yeah. So, like, one of my kind of jokes is like, uh, Minnesota is the world capital of uh, houses that have Black Lives Matter signs in front of them, but I've never had black people in them. Mm hmm. Right. And if I say that in Stillwater, they laugh, but like they know it's true. Yeah. So 
that type of thing is just like kind of <laughs> the the general pattern of like a lot of my material because it's what I lived, it's what I saw, it's what I went through to bring me here to this point. So I want to talk about comedy, but I also want to address what you just said. Why do you think that is that? we are the home of Black Lives Matter signs on the outside of houses that Black Lives has never actually been inside of? I have an answer. I I don't have a definitive answer. I have, you know, certain ideas. Like, I think a lot of times people are just uncomfortable with what's different. Hmm. They're in this bubble where, you know, a lot of people in small towns dress the same, got the same cars, yeah. like the same country songs, and... So if somebody's different, whatever different looks like, people just stray away from different. Hmm. I think they put them signs out there so they don't uh, get their house vandalized. There was that in the riots too. I ain't gonna lie. I I saw I saw those signs at uh, Lake Calhoun, and I'm like, y'all don't even have black neighbors. There's no we don't know about this area code. What are we What are we doing here? A lot of it was performative. You know, I talk about that, and a lot of it is just like. They want to look progressive. Yes. Look, that's the it's Minnesota's right. So it's it's not as important what you actually are. It's important how you look. Yeah. Do you look like you're an ally or are you actually an ally? Right. Like I've had people yeah. with Black Lives Matter bumper stickers see me walk by and lock the doors in their car. Like, what are we doing here? There's there's a disconnect. There definitely is a major disconnect. There is a very fundamental disconnect. Yeah. Um. We live in a strange, not just a strange world, but this state is a strange place. If 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 this made sense, I wouldn't have anything to make jokes about, though. True. So I'm glad in a way, yeah. right, that yeah. there's these things that, at least to me, don't make any sense that I can talk about and get people to notice them. Because, like, a lot of times people just don't notice it. Before 2020, I didn't really notice it. It didn't really, it wasn't on the radar. Yeah. And then I look back on it, and then I'm like, oh, shit. That exists. Yeah. That that person didn't like me for nothing. I didn't do anything. They mm-hmm. just don't like. And then you start me. to realize that it's always been there. Yeah. Just didn't, just didn't see it. I didn't. See, it was didn't right over it. my head. Yeah. It was. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So so talk to me about um, what what is it that got you into into comedy? Mm. So getting me into comedy was I was I was the new kid a lot. I, mm. I went to a lot of different schools kind of growing up. We moved around. Yep. Uh, so humor was an in. Humor is like this. If I can't rely on, you know, remember that time in kindergarten, it was like, well, let's make fun of whatever's going on now. And back in my day, mama jokes was like the shit. Yeah. And I was good at mama jokes. Mm. I mean, you can't do that now. Somebody might <laughs> take it, take react too much, but you can do it to me right now. I definitely won't. Give me your best. Come on. Cause I'm sure somebody who knows your mom is going to see me and be like, we heard you talking that shit <laughs> live on Lake street and we got problems with you. By the way, I want to hit the flex button real quick. I was going live Instagram live on Lake street pre COVID mm. way back when. How, what were you doing? Like one of my favorite memories is a uh, Cinco de Mayo celebration. Okay. Cinco de Mayo celebration, and there was like this, the street was packed. Mm. I'm talking about like there was like Tecate models with like handing out beer cans and yeah. the dash type shit. And I remember being on Instagram Live and being like, "This is a good feeling on Lake Street," because mm. a lot of people just see that as a negative versus like a positive. To be fair, he might have been doing it before you. I wasn't. But Live on Lake Street existed before me. Really? Before 2020. Okay. And he was actually doing interviews on Lake Street. He was doing a Vlad style, so he'd be behind the camera just asking the questions. But I would have been I would have been shitty on one of those back then, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so you so comedy was your kind of your way in as the new kid. It was the end. It was yeah. how I it was how I kind of got to meet people, like people, get them to like me. Yeah. You know, get them to be able to say my name, make a couple of jokes or whatever. Um, so it was like the way to fit in. And then kind of as I got older, people were just like, are you a comedian? You mm. should be a comedian. Mm. You're funny. I, and it, it was times where I would just be talking to someone. What I felt 
was regularly in conversation, right? Like I'm not trying to make them laugh. I'm just trying to have a conversation. Yeah. But they're laughing and they're, oh my God, that's hilarious. I never thought about it like that. You should do, that reminds me of, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And after hearing that about a thousand times, I was like, okay, well, try it out. So I remember uh, looking in the newspaper. Yeah. That's how old I am. Looking in a newspaper for an open mic. You ain't older than me. 30 these days is old, Are you 30? Man. Yeah, I'm as of Tuesday. I'm, I'm 38. Dang near the same these days, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but um, looking in a newspaper to see an open mic and seeing the open mic and showing my parents, like, I wanted to try this mm. or whatever. And if anybody has African parents, they're not too supportive of creative dreams in general. If it's not, like, school-related, it's usually a flat no. What were you supposed to be, doctor? Uh, accountant. Accountant. Yeah. Yeah. I am an accountant. Oh shit. Yeah. The comedy is like is like my passion versus oh, you, that's like a what double pays dip. the bill. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a peculiar double dip. It is. It's very left brain, right brain. Accountant slash comedian. There's no way to combine the two. This is you can't make somebody laugh if they're broke. It's very mm, hard to do. Do you try? Hell no. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Just> like it's <laughs> like, hey man, you need some more money. You know what Dark I mean? Humor. Um, you need to buy. I've been listening. I'm looking at your account, and I'm just wondering: Do you need to borrow some money? That's what I would say. <laughs> uh, so, and then, uh, and telling my parents like, "There's this thing. I want to try it. Whatever, whatever." And I remember we had a big family meeting at the table. Yeah. And after they decided I couldn't go, the mic had already been over for an hour and a half. Oh. So that was my formal introduction to not being able to perform. And then when I went Damn. to college is kind of where I went to like perform more, a little bit more regularly and get on and kind of cut my teeth. The p expression, I hate that expression, by the way, cut, cut your teeth. Yeah, I don't even know what it means. It's like a uh, get used to it and get a gain experience. It's in supposed it. to, it's supposed to uh, exemplify teething, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Like if a baby's teeth are coming in, they're cutting teeth. Yeah. So essentially it's called like you're a baby. <laughs> I was yeah. right comedy yeah. baby yeah um and then after college coming back to Minneapolis is kind of where I started here okay um and then where did you go wh where did you go to college Mankato Ooh. yeah so is that I mean is that a bad thing good thing mm, both okay. honestly I think there's good things and bad things like with a, a lot of different places I think that Mankato so I spent a lot of time growing up in Blaine and Mankato. Mm. And that kind of prepared me for like the white part of Minnesota. Yeah. Right. And how that tends to work and how, you know, people say things without really saying things and, you know, how it can be convenient that there's always this one funny little way where you're not included in the activity or, you know, whatever it is. But, yeah. and then on the other side of that is all the time I spent in like Brooklyn Park and South Minneapolis. So I feel like I have a pretty good balance as far as the two polar opposites yeah. that minnesota has because yep. it's this is a very polarizing place it is so i feel like i kind of got a good handle on both for better or for worse yeah so mankato helped you helped you helped different yeah. perspectives but also hurt because like um it's a small town there's not a whole lot of things to do mm -hmm. drink and go have fun all these college things but as far as like creatively it wasn't the best place to be like the open mics was the basement of the student union where mm. there was like one person watching is that the best place to kind of start no so d did you do some comedy out there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I was a part of the comedy group which was uh student center and then shows in the auditorium every once in a while actually who else was on that uh john x Okay. Yeah. Shout out to John. So I've been knowing John for a decade plus. Okay. Um, he's not funny though. <laughs> John, he said it, not me, man. Keep keep giving me them 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 interesting intros. <laughs> Every intro he gives me, he says uh, I didn't like him in college, and I'm like, <laughs> that doesn't help me, man. <laughs> You're supposed to say positive things about the comedian. Not supposed to be like like one time he was like. Uh, the only jokes he told in college was about Martin Luther King. And I'm like, we're not in college right now. I'm going to be talking about, you know, different shit. I'm going to tell, uh, stop bringing up old shit. You know what I mean? That's funny. Shout out to John, man. Um, so, yeah. And then after that, coming to Minneapolis was 
in a way kind of a shell shock, but also in a way was good because I kind of got to be able to experience what it's like to make people here laugh. Mm. So uh, about 80 to 85 percent of the comedy shows are white, white. Yep. Right. So that's where that Blaine Mankato brain kind of kicks in and. Mm you know, being able to translate ideas for different crowds. And then the 15%, that other 15% is like hood hood shows. Mm. Like I remember one time in a show, I got played off the stage when they played uh, Ruga's Let the GDs in the Door. Oh, man. Middle of my joke, DJ hits a button, that song plays, all the, everybody starts throwing up their signs and starts <laughs> dancing right in front of the <laughs> stage. And I'm like, so fuck these jokes, I guess. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so showtime at the Apollo, dude. I got I got clowned, yep. man. Um, you so gotta, you got to go through that though, right? Like that's an important piece to go through as a stand-up comedian. Yeah, you got to bomb. You got to bomb. You got to bomb again. Yep. You got to because it's about picking yourself back up. Yep. The, that's the name of this game. Is like no matter what happens, there's always there's always you you picking yourself back up. I, I'll I'll be the guy at a show where someone's bombing laughing my ass off i think bombing is hilarious in that, its own in its own that's very like comedian brain like because yeah. other comedians can watch someone suck and be like well i had fun that's that was hilarious. funny yeah. but if the regular people are just like yeah. blank stares yeah. then you didn't accomplish the mission the bomb can be great man the bomb can be great. Can you be learn great. something in the bomb. Like yes. you learn something if, you know what I'm saying? If you make a song that people don't like but you like, you have to figure out, kind of reassess, well, for sure. what makes this good for them the way it is good for me. Yeah. So you learn something in a bomb. And I'll never forget some of my bombs. I got booed before. Man. Booed. That's tough. Boo. Boo. Tough. I got booed before. Humbling. Is it? Does Fuck Lacrosse, Wisconsin. I just want to say that. Fuck Lacrosse, Wisconsin. Of course it was Wisconsin. I never go to Wisconsin. I hate those people, man. They don't even have the internet there. They cheese. Still got, they still got dial up. All they got is cheese and four wheelers. Brett Favre's dick pics, man. Fuck those people. Oh, man. No, not the dick pics. Bro, that's so funny you say that. I swear to I was scrolling through old pictures yesterday. I don't I have to. Uh oh. Say what? I was scrolling through old pictures yesterday, and back in 2010. My best friend and I, we went to a Halloween party dressed up as Brett Favre. And a reporter. And Vasante Shenko. What? He had a fucking 14-inch black the dildo phallus. hanging out of his pants. Yeesh. I had the little white dildo hanging out of my pants. We had the jersey on. I painted my, now I'm good, but I paint, back then I painted my hair silver. Okay, cool. Had the Favre jersey on. like, And I was thinking to myself, for one, we could never do that today. Okay. And two, how glad I was he didn't fucking go blackface yeah because yeah. the only thing black about him that day was the dick that was the only thing and still crazy that is a wild costume still crazy and y'all were paired up there was safety in numbers that day man Bro, the picture i found was me and him side by side like this like we were doing like hand signs or something like that yeah and our dicks were crossed yeah <laughs> crazy Correct. And we went to a party with other people in public. It, in public, and took pictures. Yo, that other people have too. Times were different, bro. Times were very different. It was a great time. I can't say I did stuff like that, but I remember <laughs> uh, I was real, real drunk, enjoying myself, and it was karaoke night, mm. and they played uh, Jeremiah's birthday sex. Man, and just fucked to that last night. No cap. I'm no, no bap. Right for the camera and. Uh, I started actually giving a lady a lap dance while nice. singing that song. Hey. And I was selling the fuck out of that lap dance. She should have gave me $25. I ain't gonna lie. She gave you nothing? Zero. Sex? No. Hey, man. If I was having a bunch of sex, I probably wouldn't be doing jokes. So. Speaking, of bir <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of birthdays and sex, you're dropping your first comedy album. Yes. Tuesday. Tuesday. On your birthday. February 7th, 2023, my 30th birthday. Three decades around the planet. I finally figured that it's time to get canceled. <laughs> uh, oh. oh, you're going to make me listen to this. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, like I said, it's like 30. Um, I feel like I've been doing this for long enough to just have like a formal introduction of like, this is me. Yeah. This is my ideas. Mm -hmm. This is what I think is funny. This is what I think 
uh, isn't necessarily ha ha funny, but still, if you think about it, there's a laugh here. Yeah. Um, Fuck it, man. So is this a recorded live set, or is this something that you made specifically for audio? So it is um, recorded audio of different sets that I've had. Got it. So it's like a mixtape. Okay. So I'm taking my greatest hits that I've done kind of throughout the last year and a half Mm -hmm. and putting them together and kind of putting that out. Dope. And... No, not no video though. I have videos, but I, I post. I po- actually post videos to my Instagram. I post clips for sure. I mean, I see. I I looked at some of them, but I'm just curious, like why the, why the audio version and not the video version? I think that, uh, like I said, this is an intro, okay. right? So I just want to kind of work my way up to gotcha. here's this video, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, however long it is, yeah. versus just like here's a because it's so easily digestible. People listen to podcasts all day long. Yeah. Sure. You know what I mean? Yep. So it's for it's easier to for me to just say I got, you know, these certain uh, bits and this certain thing for you to enjoy. And as you move along with your day and then sooner or later, there's going to be like a video okay. of the good stuff. So does the does the album have a title? I assume Ready to fly. Ready to fly. Yeah. And how are you releasing this? Are you releasing this like independently on a website? Are you going streaming platforms? How are you doing it? YouTube, SoundCloud, streaming platforms. Okay. So is this going to be like on Spotify? Yes. It will be. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. I hope people listen. Yeah. That's always the goal. I think they will. Listen. <laughs> you said you're ready to get canceled. I'm ready to listen to you get canceled. I mean, being being opinion, being an opinionated minority in Minneapolis, you're already canceled. I ain't mm. going to lie. Well, hopefully this reaches outside of Minneapolis. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, the minute there's a, a bunch of people talking about, you know, boats on lakes and hot dish and you say, fuck the police, mm. they're already not trying to hear whatever else you have to say. Mm. Tell me about it. Um, so I've been canceled a thousand times. I'm not gonna lie. That interview where the dude was talking about barbers, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Every single time you start talking, you start naming random motherfuckers that cuts hair, and I'm like, how many barbers does this motherfucker know, bro? Yeah, he's wild. That was the. F- I was laughing till there was tears in my eyes. I was mad man. about that for about two weeks, <laughs> and then I was telling, I was actually telling Chief. Uh, Great clips. Last week, last <laughs> week, last week, the sting of it finally wore off. I got drunk one night and laid in bed with my wife and watched it in its entirety. Oh God! I laughed my ass off. It is the funny, like that is the funniest thing in the world to me. That that was just hilarious. <laughs> That's like my sense of humor, where it's like it's not meant to be funny, but it's the funniest thing For in the world. Sure. Hilarious. Yes. You're asking him, what do you want to talk about? I, I don't even. Yeah. This motherfucker cuts hair, and he did this, and yeah. he did that, and I'm like, "What are we? What are we doing right now? This nah, is hilarious." It was a good. It was. It was a. It was a. It was not a good time. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. But that was some Ray J Breakfast Club shit. If you remember the Ray J of, Breakfast of Club shit, where he went all the way oh. left, mm-hmm. that was the live on Lake Street Ray J moment, man. Yeah, it'll live in infamy. For Shout sure. out Ray J. Shout out to Ray. Holla at me, and man. Fa- and fabulous. Don't forget about Fab. <laughs> I let him drop my top. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. He was wild. Dude. Oh man. Ray J's a legend. The legend. The legend. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. Yeah. Love Ray J. The legend. I hit it first is a classic. <sighs> if you hear that sound, that's that, that song being bumped real loud in a residential area, it's probably me. I ain't gonna lie to you. It makes sense. Yeah. I haven't listened to that since it came out. I will never I stop to listening to that. I gotta run it back. It consistently. That needs to be in in your consistent playlist. I might need to find like one quote from it and use it as my intro. Mm, maybe, maybe. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna check the lyrics after this. I I feel like because people listen to One Wish and like One Wish is cool, but one I hit it for key garbage. I hate One Wish. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> when he did that whole verses, that shit, that shit was crazy. Um. So, um. You know, I'm a I'm a really big comedy fan. Yeah. Like I'm a re- I'm love stand-up comedy my you know some obviously you got you know you got the goats you got the Chappelle's, chris rocks bill burrs you know th- i mean that's the borderline the rushmore right you're I, a rushmore I, 
I'm saying it's not necessarily. You know how people are like, who's the top five videographers? Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. 30 motherfuckers argue, argue in the comments. I, I can nerd argue saying, about comedy all day. I'm not even saying day. that's my rush. Yeah. I'm just saying that that's kind of like the. The like established Jordan consensus. Bird magic. Yeah, that, exactly. That, I feel like that's like, uh, well, as far as now, but as far as like ever, yeah. I feel like the forever Rushmore is like Pryor, mm. Carlin. Yep. Um, Lenny Bruce gets mentioned a whole lot. Mm. Um, and he's, you know, kind of from way back when. Um, Chappelle, Chris Rock. Um, I think. You don't, I think the, you don't got Bill Burr in there? There's so many names. There is. I really, honestly, for me, Eddie Griffin. Oh, Eddie. I could watch oh, Eddie Griffin all fucking day. Because not only is he hilarious, he physically acts out his bits immaculately yep. it's it's fucking perfect yeah and then he's he, insightful as fuck a, a lot of comedians are not are very shallow yes right they're they're saying they're giving you nothing yes and no offense there's a lot of rappers that do that too but we're not here to talk about that but he's a he's he gives knowledge he gives insight he gives perspective yep. you actually gain knowledge by listening to his uh, material and it's entertainment, right? Yeah. So it's, you're being entertained, but you're being educated. Yep. That's my ultimate goal: is entertainment, education, boom. Mm. Versus just like I got roaches and baby mama jokes and yeah. you know whatever. Boom, 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 boom. For sure, uh, yeah. And you know it's funny. I'm reminded Eddie Griffin. I was put onto him as a stand-up comedian by Master P. Make him say, uh, the foolish, foolish. Tell you, man, I'm a comedy nerd, bro. Bro, I used to watch that movie and fast forward to the parts where he was doing stand up. Yeah. Because I loved his stand up. Yeah. Like it was so damn funny. And I never, like, back in those days, I was a kid. I never really put two and two together that, like, he actually does stand up. So after I realized he actually does stand up, not just in the movie Foolish. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wow. And you saying that just reminded me of kind of how I got into comedy because I remember I was like nine or ten mm -hmm. and I went to Target and I don't know why, but they let me buy the original Kings of Comedy DVD. And I used to just over and over sure. and over and over yep. and over because like number one, it's four people. You're getting four different flavors. Yep. Number two, they're all funny as fuck. Funny There's as fuck. no whack here everything is just and i had never heard people talk like that i had never heard people talk about the things they talked about mm -hmm. i had never heard that level of honesty yeah because bernie mac honest bro like my sister's on drugs these are the kids and goats. it's you know what i mean Bernie's like the goats too he's right there he's he's he, he's like um like big l in in like the rap because yeah. the people that listen to him are just like yo. This yep. is this is the truth. This is that's a great that's a great comparison. I appreciate that. There's gonna be some dude in the comments. Nah, he's really. Da -da 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 -da. That's a great comparison. I because and he also you know and he also died too soon. Way too soon. You know what I mean? That, yeah. I I feel like that's also a big thing for uh, specifically black comics is like you got to take care of your health. Like so many times, Robin that. Harris died mm -hmm. at like 36. Like heart comedians are incredibly unhealthy people. <laughs> it's so no bad, disrespect, man. I, none taken. Do better. None taken. Yeah. I've seen some of the downfalls that mm -hmm. can reach people, and a lot of it is uh, it's mental, right? Because yeah. comedy is like this whole high where you you when you entertain people and you get that endorphin rush, yep. you have to find something when you're not doing comedy to can, can, uh, continue yeah. that endorphin rush, right? And yep. so many people will reach for drugs, this, that, food, whatever. So it, you can wrap yourself up in like this validation vortex, like this addiction, and then it just doesn't end up well. Yeah. So. So. Um, and we're also very unnaturally happy, unhappy people because we think about stuff all fucking day. Well, that's why that's what makes y'all comedians. Yeah, is your yeah. it just and your need for you know validation. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we all we all have a need for validation, right? But, but a lot of people, it's just like I get it from the people around me. Yeah, I get it from just being around other people and talking about the weather and talking yeah. about my pets, yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm just like, nah. Did you hear about in the news? There was a dude in Bloomington that killed his wife because she wouldn't have sex with him. 
that's not what they meant by killing the pussy. You know what I mean? Uh, like that's uh, uh, that's where my brain is on a yeah. consistent basis. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and I think I, I have a. I appreciate the rim shot, by the way. The I fucking ha- touch. I, I have a tre- I have a tremendous amount of respect for stand-up comedians because I think it's m- possibly the most vulnerable profession in the world. Yeah. It's one of for sure. Yeah. You are putting yourself up there by yourself in front of people. No music. No music. No DJ. Just you. Not 50 other motherfuckers on the stage with you wearing whatever matching shirts. Yeah. It's just you. Yeah. I think it's incredible. And Um, it takes a certain kind of crazy to want that. And it's your job. Yeah. To make people happy. Yeah. It's your job. Yeah. That's a tough job man it makes it it consistently drives people crazy (laughs) the one thing that you do have going for you is people are showing up to be happy Mm -hmm. but if you don't make them happy you get booed sure and they might throw something at you so or heckle you honestly i used to not be able to handle the heckles Mm. i used to just freeze clam up real like i don't know how to but then I, number one, got booed, and number two, kind of got used to it, and so I now have the tools to be able to navigate that and actually create laughter when somebody heckles me versus just, like, freezing in the moment and trying to move on, especially if it's in a room where it's there's a lot of minorities in there and they feel like they can just get up on you like that Mm -hmm. and talk about your outfit, talk about your hair, talk about your shoes. It's like, well, bring it on. Like we're going to work within the confines of comedy. Right. But if that's how you want to play, then we can play that game. Yeah. That, that, that used to terrify me as like a roasting battle. Now it's like, well, bring it on. You do. It's, it's, it's the name of the game. So that's what you do. uh, Also speaking of comedians being vulnerable, it's like this, it's a gift and a curse. Yep. So it's a gift because when you don't have like this huge ego and you have the ability to kind of be very honest about things, then you're able to talk about certain things that other people might not be able to talk about. Yeah. Right. Like mm-hmm. fears, you know, what your insecurities are kind of in, in a, in a humane way. Mm-hmm. But the curse is, I can be, and comedians can be incredibly sensitive. For sure. Sensitive. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it sounds crazy, but comedians are the worst people to tell jokes to. We just uh, take shit personal. Yeah. And we just think you're talking about us. And I, we think think I, told, I think I told you a joke like 20 minutes ago, and you just looked at me like you wanted me to die. So I'm the worst person to tell a joke yeah. to. I will readily admit that. Yeah. I, I'm not going to understand it. I'm not going to, because I don't think about it the same way. I'm, I will never make that mistake again. It's just not even. I apologize. <laughs> I am not funny. Appreciate that. You are. Funny. I'm not either. I'm no, funny. Not. I'm not funny. I'm funny looking, man. I ain't gonna lie. All this mm-hmm. stuff is a facade. Well, I mean, you've been funny th- this interview, and I can, and I actually legitimately look forward to listening to your album. If if my name was easier to say, I might be a rapper, man. I ain't gonna lie. But I can never imagine people. <laughs> I can never imagine people wanting to listen to a positive rap album these days. Like, rap is so incredibly negative. Ugh. I don't want to use the word rap. I'll don't just remind use. Me, man, I did an interview earlier today that was very difficult, and it was the, a lot of the subject matter was that, and it has me looking at things very differently. It's psychologically draining. Yeah, it is. And it's sad because it conditions people. And there's a whole bunch of other deep, but that's what I'm saying. It's like a lot of people will just hear a song and be like, man, that song sounds tight. I'll hear that song and I'm like, they're talking about killing black people for four minutes, man. What what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. But that's me being a hater. It's tough. So we got a wrap, but you got the album coming out. Ready to fly. February 7th. Fuck the police, man. I just. I just want to put that out there one more time just for the road. Fuck the police. I'm not going to fuck them. You can, though. I, I saw a p- police officer. I'm not going to say where, which department, but I would definitely take that literally with that certain female officer. Hello. No, I've seen a couple of them. I've seen a couple. I've seen a couple of them. Blaine. <laughs> Shout out to Blaine. They're out there. <laughs> Shout out to Blaine. Blaine High School, man. Class them, of 2011. I've seen them driving and texting. I saw one do a U-turn on the highway. I'm like, who am I supposed to report this to? them like what yeah. the <laughs> fbi yeah we found ourselves innocent like yeah. what <laughs> how does that work <laughs> we investigated ourselves and found ourselves innocent we did an internal investigation and it turns out u-turn was legal imagine if imagine if uh 
dudes who cheat could investigate themselves like police after they kill people. Yeah. The dudes who cheat could just be like, well, I investigated myself and found out I actually did nothing wrong here. So you I'm be, clear. You might be honest with something. Say word. And that's it, man. Um, tell, them where, tell them where to find you and make sure they know where to go find the album as well. <sighs> okay. Ready to fly, February 7th. Uh, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, um, streaming services. Um, I will post more clips on YouTube. I do post clips on my Instagram. My Instagram is BudNotBuddy, B-U-D-N-O-T-B-U-D-D-Y. That's my favorite book, Walter D. Myers. Rest in peace. Um uh also just search ashinafi i know it's a hard name to spell but a-s-h-i-n-a-f-i-e a-b-e-b-e also um i want to say this as well uh ethiopian girls holla at me man mm. home team mm. as soon as i see <laughs> as soon as i see a fatty with a forehead to match Ooh. get at All me right, man. i appreciate your time i'm glad we could do it appreciate and the i wish love, you the best man. of luck and i look forward to not only the album but i want to see uh i want to see a special on YouTube. Knock on whatever this is, man. I see a special on YouTube. And if you need somebody somebody to shoot it for you, I know some people. Say less. For real. My man. It, man. Appreciate you. Shout out Lake another, Street. Another episode of Minnesota's number one daily show live on Lake Street. I'm Jake Faircloth. Follow me everywhere at Jake Faircloth one It ain't that I can't stop. It's that I won't stop. I made a few plays off a of flip. Now I'm on top. I'm Southside Chief, homie. Yeah. What you know about it? Lake Street legend CEO, not the co-founder. What you wanna know about me? I'm so churched up. I'm the last man standing, but I went first up. Most hated, they don't say it when I roll up. The things that people say about me, they don't say close up. Check it. I ain't been to the booth in a minute. Niggas hate the fact that I'm winning. Who makes him the chief for the South Side? Oh my nigga, I'm not a lieutenant. When I was in the gym, you wasn't in it. FaceTime, so my windows is tinted. If I said that shit, then I meant it. Niggas gave me the rules and I bent it. Same, same nigga that was trapping while I was suspended. You wasn't in them hallways banging, boy, you wasn't in it. Really a genuine nigga, homie, don't get offended. From East Lake, South Murder. I'm just saying that I can't stop. Is that I won't stop. 